would you rather have in the postseason? This one's tough. AD or Giannis? AD. That's not even hard for me uh, because Giannis has to show me he can hit perimeter shots, which he hasn't shown me in the postseason. I know AD could do that. And oh, by the way, Max, to piggyback off of uh, KP getting on you just a few seconds ago, Basically, what he's reminding you of is the fact that he and I picked Miami when you picked Milwaukee because you was raving about Chris Middleton when you picked Milwaukee. And obviously, that didn't prove to be correct. Now, getting back to my point here, Giannis well, is a man child up. in the regular season. But come postseason time, when D I say this all the time, come the postseason, teams get back on defense. They force you to be. A half court. One of the reasons why we raved, and KP, you could co-sign this, one of the reasons we raved so much about Showtime with Irvin Magic Johnson, with Worthy on one wing, Byron Scott on another, Cooper trailing, stuff like that, where we used to go off about that and we loved it so much. We didn't just marvel at the Lakers and Magic Johnson because of the fast break. We marveled at the fact that the fast break never left them, no matter what defenses tried to do. Somehow, some way. Because of the greatness of Magic Johnson, you could always push the ball up the court. And you will always in attract me. And that's what you marveled about because that doesn't usually happen. And so as a result of that, let's transition to the modern day age with the Greek freak in Milwaukee. You don't really have a situation with Eric Bledsoe and those boys at the time where you were able to push the ball up the floor the way that you would like to because that's when Giannis is really lethal in the open court. It's not to say that he can't do stuff in the half court, but not to the degree of his danger, of how dangerous he is in the open court. So they come back on, they get back on defense. You become a half court player. If you don't have a perimeter shot, there's nothing you can do. What makes Anthony Davis so great Inside or out, it doesn't matter. He can play with his back to the basket. He can play face to the basket. He can drive to the hole. Or he can pull up from 17. Or he can pull up from 19 and beyond. It doesn't matter. The arsenal of his offensive attack is better than that of the Greek freak. Plus, he's a rim protector and a shot blocker and a rebounder when he wants to be. Anthony Davis is the real deal. And I would take him over the Greek freak without question. I understand those arguments. Um, he's more well-rounded. Stephen A., you tend to like those kind of players in the playoffs. You like, in order of preference, KD, AD, Giannis, because that's the descending order of, of like, how well-rounded their games are. But sometimes a dude can do certain things so well that even if they're not as well-rounded, they're more valuable. I had Andre Snellings of ESPN fame, Stephen A., who was also a neural engineer, I believe. He's like, you know, a very, very smart guy and knows the basketball analytics on my radio show, the Max Kellerman Show, 2 p.m. Eastern, by the way, on ESPN Radio and ESPN+. Plus. And he was saying he'd take Giannis. <laughs> he'd take Giannis, and it's not a difficult choice for him. And he said because Giannis, when you look at how he makes his teammates, Giannis, like AD can compile stats, and he's great, no doubt about it, and all the reasons you said about him are, are, are correct. But Giannis can also elevate those around him because he's an exceptional passer with, with court vision because of his handles given his size. No, he can't shoot it like AD, although, again, AD's a better shooter than Giannis. Is he a way better shooter than Giannis? He's a better shooter. Giannis is a step below that, but he's not, it's not like you're talking about Ben Simmons. you got to put him in the dunker spot because he can't shoot at all. If you leave him alone, he can knock down a shot. Um, when you look at, at the kind of force Giannis is on a court, Right now, going back to our previous argument, you guys are being heavily influenced by the fact that you just saw AD play with LeBron. If you put Giannis with LeBron, you would say, this dude, it's, it's impossible. Like, just like the Lakers are now, they would not lose anything if you swapped out AD with Giannis. And if push came to shove, I'm taking Giannis. That, that's not true, Max. First of all, to me, LeBron... And Giannis both need the ball in their hands to be dominant, meaning that Thank they can't you. play off the ball. Anthony Davis could play off the ball. And Max, I don't know what analytics and, and I and I've been on your talk your radio show and I love coming on there and handing you L's like I'm doing today. But if you're gonna sit up here and tell me that it's not night and day between Anthony Davis and Giannis, you're tripping. 
Anthony Davis skill set is something that we have never seen before. The closest thing to it sure. was maybe Kevin Garnett, and that's my brother. I played with him. When you look at Anthony Davis, it's more to his package than just being able to shoot better than Giannis. He has a better handle than Giannis. He has better post moves. He has the wiggle. And you talk about AD and his, you talk about Giannis and his passing, but AD could drop dimes. When he's needed to, he know how to pass out the double team. He know how to drive and kick. Uh, excuse me, in the, in, the, in the NBA Finals and in the bubble last season, did we not see him throwing lob after lob to Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee on big to big passing he when he was the catching the ball in the pocket pass? Who's the better passer? AD. AD. Don't get it twisted. Giannis just had better passer than Giannis. I don't think so. More than Anthony Davis. Yes. Oh my God. Giannis just learned how to find He's the corner better. pass Matt. this season. And listen, listen. I know we got to. I I know we got to move on, but a couple of things. Number one, uh, Anthony Davis, I believe, is a better passer than Giannis. He definitely is a better ball handler than Giannis. And last but not least, Max, just a little bit of advice because you've been doing radio for years, and I know you know what you're doing because you're a pro. But in terms of ratings, you might not want to have the analytics dudes on. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. The analytics dudes don't I mean anything. I, I mean, think, we respect think, them, think, but that ain't going to help you in the ratings, bro. Excellent. That ain't going to help you in the ratings. Not the analytics. Oh, we've had Andre not on the analytics. Show. Trust me on that. Huh? Okay. What? <laughs> Time to transition. has been on our What'd show on first take. Hey, listen, I don't recall that. Said, but that's fine. Yeah. It was. It was a. Listen, yeah. I'm not knocking them. The analytics dudes are very bright and smart, and I wish them nothing but the best. I'm just talking about ratings. It ain't gonna work in the ratings. Analytics, nah. Stop that. Trust me. Yeah. Analytics works in the ratings. Sure, it does. No, it doesn't. Stop. All right, we're not debating what works in the ratings. Okay, let, let, let's continue the NBA season preview here, guys. The number know. one player on our list is who? The Golden State Warriors. So here's the thing that I have a problem with you about, Max. Now you want to downgrade Chris Middleton. But last year, when Stephen A. and I was arguing yeah. with you when they was about to play the Miami Heat, you were sitting up here saying, oh, Chris Middleton, he's like that. Chris Middleton's really good. He's a really good two-guard. He's, he's a really good complimentary player. All they need is another really star. Good. Well, they have another star. No, I'm not saying okay. really good. This is not the league where really good gets it done. You need great. Giannis needs a great crime uh, partner. <laughs> he needs a great one. AD's got one. Right. He's got LeBron. Let me leave you with this. Giannis has two MVPs, zero titles through seven seasons in the NBA. That's the exact place that LeBron James was in at this point in his career. Now we go to number two, LeBron James' teammate, Anthony Davis. So the Brow led the Lakers in points and rebounds last season. Davis was a force for the Lakers during last season's run to the championship. He came up clutch by hitting one of the biggest shots of the playoffs, a buzzer-beating three-point shot to defeat the Nuggets game two of the West. Russell Westbrook in red, white, and blue Saturday night as he made his Washington Wizards preseason debut. Russ's first go-around with his third NBA team lasted just 17 minutes. He knocked down four shots in 10 attempts, eight points, three assists, plenty of excitement as well for a Wizards team that could use a little excitement moving forward. Welcome in, everybody. It is the latest edition of Game Time. Good to have you with us. I'm Matt Weiner here wrapping up the final night of the NBA preseason before opening night on Tuesday with the TNT doubleheader. We'll get to all three preseason games throughout the show, but uh, this is a, a show for predictions as well.